Sky News has found four types of animal fur are being sold on the British High Street but marketed to shoppers as fake fur. That's right, experts identified items consistent with rabbit, raccoon dog, mink and even cat, with the products missold online in bargain shops and even in one of the country's biggest department stores. Sarah Hadjibagheri has this exclusive report. It's the hottest trend for the colder months, faux fur. But can you trust that what you're being sold is really synthetic? A Sky News investigation has found real animal fur being sold on the British High Street, but falsely advertised to shoppers as fake. And we aren't talking back alleys. We hit the most famous shopping streets in the UK with the head of an animal protection charity. Even flagship big name stores who assured us they had strict no fur policies were mis-selling products. These feel really soft. It's just a uh, fake fur, because so we're not allowed to sell anything with real fur. So we've just bought these gloves. They're being sold as fake fur and for only £30. Mm -hmm. What do you think they're actually made of? So it's definitely real animal fur and most likely to be a rabbit fur. Life comes cheap in Asia's fur farms, and so you can pick up real fur in the UK at bargain basement prices. What's it made out of? It's not real. Just stand by. It's not fur. I just definitely don't want to buy fur. If it's fur, it's not as cheap. But we came out with a pair of shoes and a beanie, which were not fake, but the real deal. The vast majority of people wouldn't think that you could get this much fur on a hat for £10. In this case, it says made in China, all synthetic. Mm -hmm. But this is certainly not synthetic. Uh, this is real animal fur. You can tell from the way that the ends of the fur taper. We also bought several pairs of shoes from fast fashion outlet Misguided and had our shopping haul tested by a fibres expert. So we sent you the items from our shopping trip and what did you find? I found that they were all genuine animal fur and that there were a range of species. I found rabbit, raccoon dog, cat and mink. In your experience, how common is it to find these species on the high street? It's becoming increasingly common. Uh, particularly, I would say, over the past five years. Rabbit is fairly common and mink is moderately common. Cat is highly unusual. The, these shapes and these distances and the profiles, the prominence, everything is characteristic of cat. The raccoon dog is becoming more common. You might not have seen this creature before, but its fur has been creeping into retail supply chains. Paz is a one-year-old raccoon dog. If you see his fur coat here and have a feed of it, it's really soft and dense. And it's that soft, dense fur which not only keeps him safe um, in, his, in the harsh climates of um, Southeast Asia, but it also makes him quite appealing to the fur trade. And um, that combined with massive litters of anywhere up to 16 individuals from one set of parents, uh, they are being mass farmed now and often skinned alive. It's that cruelty that fashion and animal lover Donna has always tried to avoid. I love clothes, but I would never ever knowingly buy fur. It's not something I agree with at all. She bought the misguided shoes and immediately suspected they were real fur. Touching it was just too soft, too animal-like for it to be fake. I, I knew in an instant through basically looking at the skin that it was backed onto that I could see it's pelt and it's not fabric. So that's when I challenged the retailer, asking them why this was and could they investigate it, please. I was hoping they'd take it more seriously, but they dismissed it as being faux. So you were right, we had the items tested and the shoes came back as most consistent with cat fur. Cat fur? Really? My life is basically animals and cats, so it's, it's really hurtful, really shocking. Whether they know they're selling it or not, either way, there needs to be something done about it. They need to be more responsible for what they're selling. We contacted the retailers with our findings. None would appear on camera. Misguided said they'll be launching an internal investigation with the relevant suppliers and will ensure these matters are addressed urgently. House of Fraser told us they have a strict no fur policy and would never knowingly mislead customers. They take this issue very seriously and have communicated this to the brand in question. All products have been removed from sale and refunds will be offered. Fur farms were banned in the UK in 2003. But despite changing tastes, the fur trade is still not out of British fashion. Sarah Hedgebegheri, Sky News. Let's talk now to the co-founder of animal rights group Surge. That's Ed Winters, who joins us now from central London. Ed, how long have you been aware that, that this is becoming an issue on the high street? 
Well, this has been an issue for quite some time now. In 2015, the Humane Society did an undercover investigation, and even in December 2016, ITV Good Morning Britain also did one, and they found that uh, shops like Debenhams and Forever 21 were also um, selling real fur labelled as fake fur. So this isn't a new problem, it's something that's been around for quite a long time, and the fact that it's still persisting, it's something that we're still finding on the high streets, is really, really concerning. Why is it essentially cheaper to get real fur than fake fur in this day and age? Well, the problem is it's so cheap to produce um, real fur in China. There's no money spent on the welfare of these animals. They're kept in tiny cages where they go insane and they self-mutilate and cannibalize one another. And the way that they're killed is quite often they're anally electrocuted and skinned alive. So there's no money spent on the well-being and welfare of these animals, which means they're incredibly cheap to raise, incredibly cheap to kill. And therefore, when they export them into the West, into countries such as the UK, they're incredibly cheap to sell. So where do you feel the root of the responsibility lies? I mean, clearly these animals are being kept in unhumane conditions uh, and are being exploited by, by the people breeding them, but surely it's up to the people who are making the clothes and the people who are selling the clothes to do something about this. I mean, I think trading standards have a, a big responsibility to make sure that these uh, retail stores are selling the real product that they're advertising. It's an incredibly concerning affair, really, when people think they're buying an ethical option and in turn it, it, they realise, actually, that it's very unethical. But I think that there's a broader issue here. And if we look to, like, uh, in California, in the city of Berkeley, they recently just made it illegal to sell fur. Now, there are bigger issues here, and we should really be looking at whether or not it's ethical to sell fur in general. So instead of it just being a retailer issue, we could also look at whether it should be a legislator issue as well. I mean, for, for customers and consumers, we saw uh, that girl in our report who bought shoes, she thought they were uh, real fur. After she'd got them, she was horrified and, and she took it up with the, with the person selling them and they told her it wasn't, it, it was fake. Yeah. What can uh, consumers do if you go into a shop and you look at something, how do you know if it's real or fake? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. The easiest thing to do is to inspect the base of where the fur is. And if it's joined on by like a pelt or it looks like flesh, then that means it's real fur. If it's on like a mesh or like a fabric, then you should be able to tell that it's fake. Also, the fur will taper off at the end if it's real, so it'll come to a point. If it stays kind of the same thickness all the way along, it would suggest that it's, um, would suggest that it's fake, sorry. Um, but another thing you can do is if you own an item of fur and you're concerned about whether or not it's real or fake, you can cut a few of the strands off and burn them. And if they smell like real hair, then you know it's fake then as well. It's difficult, though, if, if you're buying stuff online, isn't it? And so yeah. many people do a lot of their shopping online these days. Right. You don't get a chance to, to look or touch, do you? That, I mean, that's a, a huge problem, and that's why we're relying on these, these companies to make sure that they're being trustworthy and being honest. I mean, we live in a nation of animal lovers, and in fact, the RSPCA did a survey back in 2011 that showed that 95% of the British public would choose not to wear real fur. So this is a real, real problem that's sweeping the nation because we have a, a nation of animal lovers where people love dogs and cats, and without even maybe knowing, they have real dog and cat fur in their wardrobe, and they might be wearing out and about on a daily basis. Okay, Ed Winters from Surge, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.